Amen. Uh, guys, give me a little more volume on this one if you can. I don't know why the mics are fading in and out today, but we're going to have church and we're going to preach this word and give God glory. Amen. 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 God be the glory. Hallelujah. God's a good God, church. Amen. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. I say God is a great and good and awesome God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. He's brought us into a whole brand new year, not just to bring us over from 2018, but God is going to do something mighty in your life and in my life on this calendar side of the year. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. We're going to get into the word of God. God was telling me today, amen, as I was about to share, he said, affirm some things before you preach today. So I just want you to grab your Bibles or Many of you have your apps and your phones. Lift that phone in the air. If you don't have a Bible, please purchase one. Amen. As we go throughout this year, because the word of God is valuable. Amen, somebody. Amen. To God be the glory. And our Bible, this Bible that I'm holding in my hand, says this. If you and I declare a thing, it shall be established. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. This word says we shall have what we say. Amen, somebody. Amen. This word also reminds us that we need to speak things that are not are as if they were. Amen. Amen. That's right. So we're going to make right. some declarations on today. To God be the glory. No, I'm not Joe, but we're going to make some declarations on today. Amen. Amen. Say, this is my Bible. This is, my Bible. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. I am what it says I am. I can be what it says I can be. I can do all that it says I can do. And I can have everything that it says I can have. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I have authority. I have authority. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Yes, Holy Fire baptized. Fire baptized. I am equipped. I am, I am empowered with the word of God. So God, so God, we thank you, we thank you for sanctifying us, for holy, us holy, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God Amen. a hand of praise. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Our identity Amen. in God Amen. is everything. Our identity in God is everything. Amen. Go to Exodus chapter number 23, verse number 20. Second book of the Bible, Exodus 23, verse number 20. We got to start affirming some things and believing God. Amen. Amen. God has some good things in mind for you and I, and we thank God for his word that will bear fruit in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus 23, 20. When you're there, say amen. Amen. And it reads, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into a place which I have prepared for you. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression for my name is in him. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will, this is a promise from God, I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. For my angel shall go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hevites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods. Right. Nor serve them, nor do anything after their works. But you shall utterly overthrow them and break down their images. Verse number 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, 
And he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take away sickness. Come on, somebody. Amen. I will take away sickness away from the midst of you. There shall no, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. And the number of your days I will fulfill. Amen? Amen. Father, bless your word today. We give you praise for the word. Yes, Lord. God, speak to our hearts and our ears. Yes, we need you, God. So God, bless this word. Use me in this preaching and teaching moment. And God, get the glory out of each and every life, of each and every listener. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be seated in the presence of God. It will happen. Yes. Yes. Amen. It will happen. Amen. God is speaking these promises to his children. They're in the middle of a desert. They're in the middle of a wilderness. There's nothing growing. There's nothing to drink. There's nothing, amen, that is protecting them. There's no shelter. They're in the wilderness. They're in a desert place. And the character of our God is that God has a tendency to speak to us in the middle of circumstances that don't show us where we're going. The Bible says, I'm going to send my angel ahead of you. That angel is Jesus. And that angel is ahead of you because God expects you and I to get to that place that he has prepared for us. Oh, yes. 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 So as we go throughout this entire 2019 year, I'm just believing the Bible in 3 John 2, which says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper be in good health even as your soul prosper. Amen, amen. Now there's some things in the natural that we understand. In other words, in our culture, if you get a level of education, you get a level of training, you get a level, amen, of work experience under your belt, there's a possibility that you can make a good livelihood and a good lifestyle to make money and to have a, a comfortable life, amen, through your education and through your knowledge, through your wisdom, through your credentials, there is a chance that you can prosper in the natural things that this world has to offer. Amen? Amen? So we go to school, we go to college, we go to high school, we go to trade school, we go to these things because we understand if we do them, our chances and odds are increased, amen, to prosper. Amen. So it is in the physical body. We're a body, we're a soul, and we are a spirit, talking about people, human beings. We are three-part beings. And God is saying to you and I today, I need for my children to begin to take their soul salvation more seriously. Amen, amen. That's why I had to read Mark chapter 4. When you and I hear the word of God, the Bible said there are three ways that the devil come and steal this word from us. As the word is sown into our heart, church, the Bible says that the devil comes immediately. My God, he doesn't hesitate, but he comes immediately to take the word. My God, my God. Because in the natural, those of you who are gardeners, those of you that understand anything about agriculture, if you plant a seed in the dirt, if you water it enough, if you leave it in the ground, if sunshine continues to hit it, yeah. there's a natural law that that seed will grow into something beautiful. And God is saying, as you and I continue to sow seed, as he said, I'm sow the word into your life, and the devil wants to come and immediately take that word, and sometimes, if you don't immediately take the word, those who keep coming to church, those who are honoring God, those who are trying to be disciplined, it says, glory be to God. When we're making that effort, the Bible says that the cares of this world, your bill, your mortgage, your relationship, your health, your wellness, 
the things that concern you, the things from your past trying to haunt you today. Those things come to choke the word up out of you. But he says there is a core, there's a remnant that understands good ground. That there's a set amount of people that get the theory and get the philosophy that Jesus is trying to get to us today that if we stay on good ground, we will produce 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen, somebody. Amen. So when I'm talking about it will happen, I'm simply talking about the things that God has shown you, the things that God has promised you. The things that God, glory to God, has prepared. Oh my God, I'm getting happy as I think about my latter days. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Because the enemy works like this, church. If he can't stop you, he will distract you. Amen. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. That's right. My That's God, right. help me preach right. this thing, God. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. He knows you're unstoppable. We have that unshakable faith that we talked about. Yeah, that's right. He, he knows you're untouchable because there's a hedge around the people of God that no weapon formed against you will prosper. My God. But he will try to distract you. That's right. That's right. That's right. He, he, God was telling his people, you're in the wilderness. Yes, glory be to God. You're going to need me to provide water. You're going to need me to give you manna from heaven. But I brought you out in this wilderness to test you and to prove you. I don't believe in dry seasons anymore. I'm just saying that for myself. I believe God is setting me up for me to go up. Glory be to God. I believe in the name of Jesus. The things that happened in 2018 that I thought was a setback. No, God is setting me up. So now in 2019, I can come back. Oh, glory be to God. The thing that you lost on last year, God said you're going to gain on this year. The thing, glory be to God, that slipped through your fingers on last year, God said in this year, you're going to possess it. It will happen. He gives Sarah a promise. Going back to Genesis. At the set time, Sarah, I know Abraham's 100. I know you're 90 years old, but it will happen like I told you it will happen. And the Bible says, as the fullness of time came, as the set time of God came, the Bible says, Sarah conceived and delivered the baby Isaac, and nothing and no one could stop it. Glory be to God. He comes, hallelujah, to Zachariah that forgot about the prayers of former years. He came to Elizabeth that forgot about their prayers that they said in their younger years. And now Zachariah and Elizabeth are very old. They will be on childbearing years. But I'm telling you, what God said for you will happen. It will happen. What God said to you will come to pass. It will come to pass. What God promised you over your life through the prophetic word, it will happen. Glory be to God. The Bible says, though it tarry, wait for it. Glory be to God. And God says to Zachariah and Elizabeth, hallelujah, I know your past childbearing years. I know, glory be to God, you don't believe, hallelujah, that I'm going to do this thing in your latter years. But Zachariah and Elizabeth, in your old age, I'm going to do what I told you I'm going to do. I'm going to deliver a baby through your wife, womb, Elizabeth. And the Bible says it came to pass just as God said it will. Glory be to God. And God is saying to you, I've already shown you motherhood. I've already shown you a good marriage. I've already shown you entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. I've already shown you masters and PhD and doctorate degrees. I've already shown you, hallelujah, that you're going to be happy and have joy unspeakable. Who am I talking to? I've already showed you, hallelujah, you're not going to always have an apartment, but I see you in a home. I see you with the D, hallelujah. You're not going to always be paying the car note. No, baby, you're going to have the title. You're going to have ownership in the name of Jesus. Who am I preaching to today? I know it's hard, but faith come by hearing, and hearing through the word of God. I'm looking at a debt-free, debt cancellation group of people that believe God in the name of Jesus. I know you got a bad credit score today, but I'm believing the word of God. Amen. Amen. He comes.
come to attack our mind, our will, and our emotions. That's our soul. But these promises from God, there's an abundance in the head of you. There's an abundance in your future. But you have to know and you have to believe in your heart of hearts that the weight is over, number one. The struggle is over, number two. And the curse is broken, number three. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said the wait is over, the struggle is over, and the curse is broken in the name of Jesus. I look at my marriage, and it didn't turn around until like that eighth year. Yes, we were getting married. Yes, we got married, but we had a blended family, and we relied on the word of God. But as the man pronounced, I do, to, as I, me and my wife stood before the man of God, and we pronounced, I do, to one another, to a death do us part. Hallelujah. We did not know what we was going to go through. We did not know it would be a wilderness. We did not know we would argue so much and fuss and fight so much. We did not know we would want to walk away from each other. But God knew in the name of Jesus, there's a word over your marriage. There's a word over your life. Hallelujah. There's a word that I have not changed my mind and I will not change my mind. So 25 years later, there's still an angel ahead of me, but there's some testimonies behind me. Who am I talking to on today? You ain't get to where you're going, but God is doing what he needs to do in your life. That's why when one door, one door closed and you lost that job, that's why when one door closed and you lost that apartment, that's why when they repossessed that car, now you're driving again. Now you're living again. Now you got another roof over your head because God is faithful. Give God praise because he is faithful. In the name of Jesus, won't he do it? Will we always respond in faith, church? It doesn't matter if the doctor gives you a bad diagnosis. The Bible says, Jesus, through one of the promises, I will take away sickness from the middle of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I wish I had a believing church. I know the high blood pressure has been diagnosed. I know the high cholesterol has been diagnosed. I know the blood disorder has been diagnosed. I know, glory be to God, in the name of Jesus, there are charts and there is medical professionals that's telling you one thing. But I'm over here believing God in the word. By his stripes, I am healed. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my sickness. The chastisement of my peace is upon him. And if I stay in faith, by his stripes, I am healed. Believe God, church. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God wish that no one would perish and we have this foolishness of the world and it was the will of God for that person to be shot down. It was the will of God for that person to be died from the cancer. It was the will of God for them to leave here at that age. The devil is a liar. He said, I will fulfill your days. That means you're going to live long. That means you're going to live well. That means you're going to live happily. That means you're going to live joyfully. That means every day that God has ordained for your life, it will See, he's a devourer, and he's seeking around the sick whom he may destroy. Amen. Amen. But God is saying, through these promises, I'm trying to show you I'm going to be an enemy to your enemy. Oh, wow. My God. Wow. And, and what happens is that, here it is, what happens is that when we're challenged, somebody come at us. I grew up this way. Somebody come at you. Your natural response, come on, is to protect yourself. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's true. If, 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 if somebody's coming at you, spreading rumors about you, lying on you, your natural response is to defend yourself. And God is saying, hold your peace. Be still and know that I am God. And we have a generation sometimes that I understand a quick fix. 
and God will give us a quick fix sometime. God will turn that thing around immediately sometime. But the thing I'm talking about today, God is saying my ways are higher than your ways. There are some things that's going to take some time. There's some things that's going to take some processes. There's some things that can take some seasons, but if you wait on the Lord, it will surely happen. As sure as my name is God, my name is Jehovah, my name is Yahweh Yeshua, my name is provider, my name is protector, my name is in the name of Jesus prosperous. And God is saying, we need to start looking to that God more earnestly. We need to start looking to that God if we want to walk down the aisle. We need to start looking to that God and we want to grow the church. We need to put our faith back in that God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Many of us have been in situations where we saw no way out and that's the people that God is talking to. After the chapter that I read, they're about to come to the Red Sea. God had already got them out of Egypt. They already got out of slavery. They're out of bondage. And that's what God is saying to you and I. I brought you out of a bad relationship in the name of Jesus. I already brought you out of a friendship and a relationship that was toxic and poison. See, this is the year of overflow. Amen, somebody. I said this is the year of overflow. Overflow. This is your year of opportunity. This is your year of open doors. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And God went to overflow you and overwhelm you with blessing. But the Bible says we got to obey the voice of God. We got to obey the voice of God. When God says get up and leave, we got to get up and leave. If God says stay, we got to stay. If God says wait, church, we got to wait. If God says be patient, church, we got to be patient. And God is saying to my people, tell them it will happen in the name of Jesus, just as I said it would. Amen. And so many people are sometimes, they get out of this thing called faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as they go to the Red Sea, Pharaoh's coming from behind. They got mountains on both sides. There's no way out. Glory be to God. And God speaks to Moses again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God says to Moses, tell my people to go forward. God, are you kidding me? There's a water. There's an ocean. There's a sea ahead of us. How in the world? Hallelujah. Can we keep going? And God is saying, I double darn dare you to keep moving when you see no way out. I believe the word. When you see no way out, you can't figure it out. You don't know what he's going to do or how he's going to do it. He says, still move forward. And I'm going to get to the tip of the water. I might put my foot in the water. I may jump in the water. I may even be almost drowning in the water. But if my God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. Who am I talking to? Who God preaching to today? He was trying his hardest to get them to receive this kind of faith that he needed from his people. And the Bible says out of all the people that he was speaking to in the generation of Caleb and Joshua, it said only Caleb and Joshua got into the prepared place. Amen, somebody. The others died in the wilderness. Pastor Rebecca wrote a book, Don't Die in the Wilderness. And that's what God is saying to you today. On your way to your business, on your way to your blessing, on your way to your breakthrough, the devil comes to delay you and to distract you, but he cannot deter you in the name of Jesus. Oh, devil, you can't stop what God has put in motion like a GPS unit. God's going to lead me. God's going to direct me. If I'm going the wrong way, I'm believing God saying, rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. Oh, in the name of Jesus, who is God talking to on today? We don't hear the GPS of what he's saying. And you're still going around those folks. You're still going around those people. You're still on that job. And he already said, rerouting. Turn around. Stop. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Church, he wants us to yell. Amen. He wants us to stop and sit and reflect and think. Yes, Lord. That's what it is. And the world says, stay busy. 
Yeah. You need that job, you need another job, you need another job, and you need another job. Mm -hmm. That's you need to do something now. You got to still, uh oh, oh. Hold on. I got to solve this now. God said, whoa, 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 did you pray? Right, right, oh, right. Amen. God said, did you read the word concerning your finances? Ooh, my God. Amen. I, I know you're sick, but are you doing what the man of God said? Speaking those things that be not. Amen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, you got to read the word. And, and, and see, when, it's, when it, uh, uh, the Bible says, some fell on stony ground. And that means the seed, there was a little dirt. The seed went in the ground. But because it did not go way down in the ground, it did not have deep roots. So when the sun came, the bad weather came, it looked like a good flower. It looked like a good vegetable. It looked like good fruit. But it went away so easily because it did not have roots. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right. Wow. And sometimes if you and I don't get roots in this thing called Christianity, if we don't get an anchor in the claw in this thing called Christianity, if we don't take this thing seriously, if we, glory be to God, allow the cares of this world to toss us to and fro, I know you got to pay your rent. I know the demands of our day. I know inflation. Me and my wife went to the movie the other day. Brother Victor, I said, can I have a popcorn and a soda? I asked for a popcorn and a Jake, It was a popcorn and a I said it was a popcorn and a soda. And a young man said $15. Oh my God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, something rose up in me. But I had to. A popcorn and a soda, $15? Are you kidding me? But that's the times we're living in. That's crazy. Oh and if we don't understand the word, and I, see, I'm the kind of person, I believe I have great retention. That means I think I've got a great memory. But if my wife sent me around the store to stop and shop, I need eggs, milk, sugar flour, and butter. I'm destined to come back for getting one item. <laughs> I, I, I said, I think I, think, I think I got a good memory. She said, after 25 years, make the list. <laughs> Make a list, check it twice. <laughs> because I know you. I'm your help meet. I got you. Make the list. And God is saying the word is that important. 66 books written by 40 different authors that lived on three continents. Written over 1,500 years is what God invested in that holy canon of scripture. And God is saying to you and I, I put so much in that word because I want to put so much in you. There's greatness on the inside of you. There's power on the inside of you. There's so much promise and prosperity on the inside of you. And it will happen. That treasure will be revealed. Those successes will come out of you. Those victories you will win. That overcoming you will overcome. That breakthrough you will get. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I said there's a miracle with your name on it. I know I got a miracle, but there's a miracle with your name on it. And it will happen just as God said it would. When God says, I will bless your food and, and I will bless your water, he's talking about favor. He's talking about grace. He's talking about mercy. And that's why when he told the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul said, God, it looked like my prayers are not working. I came to you once, and sometimes you heard my prayers and immediately showed up, God. But God, concerning this thorn that's been in my side and been in my life for far too long, I came to you again and I prayed, God. I prayed even more earnestly, God, and you still allowed this thing to be in my life, which is a stumbling block for me. But God, then again, I said, well, maybe not once, not twice, but 
freeze a charm. And God, I prayed three times, but you removed this thing that's in my life. And God finally responded to me. Why didn't you tell me that on point one and point two? Why did you wait three tries, God, to tell me my grace is sufficient? And God is saying to you, it will happen when I say it will happen. But until it happened, my grace is sufficient for you. Until it happened, I will give you everything that you need to sustain you like I did Elijah at the brook with a raven and the brook. It will sustain you. My grace will keep you. My mercy will protect you. My favor will guide you if you believe the word of God. And I simply believe the word of God. When I don't see with these natural eyes what God has shown me, his grace is sufficient. Amen. I ain't going to lose no sleep. Right. I ain't going to do no drugs. I'm not going to over drink. I'm not going back to Pharaoh. Yeah. I'm moving straight ahead. Do I got any followers in the name of Jesus? I used to run to the liquor store when things didn't work out. I know I got an amen. Somebody used to whip out the credit card and go shopping just to feel good. And you don't have to do that anymore. Right now you can be still and know that he is God. And when God want me to drive that, God will let me have that. Oh, in the name of Jesus. When God want me to live there, God will allow me to live there. But until then, I have to know that it will happen when God says it will happen. Amen. And when we go through this year, and the devil try to remind you through delaying you and distracting you and sending counterfeits and sending things that are not from God, I know he cute, but is he from God? Amen. That's right. That's the question right there. That's the question. I know right she's there. banging, brother, but is it the Lord? Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. I know that money today, that quick money can fix your financial issues right now, but is there crime or something illegal on it? Oh my God. And the devil comes with a counterfeit. Yes, he does. Always. Yes. The, the, the devil comes with his own answer. That's right. That's so true. See, see, when, when, oh my God. When, when Jesus, when Jesus is at the house of Martha and Mary, y'all remember this story? Yeah. And Martha's just busy cooking and cleaning and doing stuff at the house. And Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary's listening to every word of Jesus because he's in the house. Wow, wow. Mary understands and captures the moment. Mary ain't watching the NFL playoffs. Mary don't care about the Super Bowl. Mary don't care about BET Awards. Mary's at the feet of Jesus. Mary don't care about Empire right now. Mary's at the feet of Jesus. And Martha's busy. Martha's so busy, busy, busy. And Martha says, hallelujah, Jesus, tell my sister to help me. I'm trying to do something good for you. I'm trying to serve you. I know who you are. I'm trying to make my house hospitable to you. And Martha, Martha, Jesus says, don't don't worry about this stuff that don't matter. Hallelujah. Who is God talking to? Are you wasting your time on stuff that really don't matter? Are you spending your wills on stuff that really ain't going to amount to much? No, I need to work on my soul. I need to work on my spirit. I need to work on the inside of what's going on inside of me. Because if I get the inside right, everything outside will be right. Who is God talking to on today? I said when the inside is right, everything outside will be right. Amen. Amen. And the world says, the world says, no, chase that paper. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. The world says, no, you need six figures. The world says, if you really want to be taken seriously, you need to make this amount of money. And the Bible says, no, the love of money mm -hmm. is the root of all evil. While some have chased it, have pierced themselves in the side with many sorrows. Some have seen even a church and a ministry as an opportunity of gain. And God is saying, no, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, I will deal with my sons and daughters and those outside of the will of God that don't believe I will do what I say I will do in the name of Jesus. Woe unto them. That's why God said, pray for your enemy. Because when I talk about it will happen, not just all this good stuff that I laid out, but the other stuff that I lay out as well. Come on, somebody. Yes. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I want a well done. I'm sorry. I just apologize for that. I just want a well done. If I got one gift, he gave some five, some three, some ten. I don't know. If he gave me one, I want a well done when I get to heaven. And when you preach, 
that was your gift, well done. You got it, I don't know, not yet. that was a well done son. I ain't even worried about the results, I'm not worried about the fruit, I'm not worried about even your little expectation. It's not predicated upon you, it's not about you, this ain't about you, it's all about me. Give God praise that you recognize it's all about your God and it ain't never been about you. Yes, he will bless you. Yes, he will prosper you. Yes, he will give you good stuff, but it's still about him. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. My God. It's still his world. Yep. We're just little players in what he wants done. That's that's why that's why God, you know, I, I saw uh, I was behind, I was telling my wife the other day, I was behind the shuttle driver guy and and uh you know, God looked about 80 years old or so. I'm like, he shouldn't be driving. And as I saw what happened, no, he shouldn't be driving. But he tried to make a, a, a turn into the garage and his fender caught the fender of a car. And instead of stopping after hearing the noise, he ripped the entire fender off of his brand new beautiful car. Oh. The fender's lying on the ground. He looks at me. He looks for cameras. And he go about his business. Oh. And I'm saying to myself, see, I had that reaction first. Then I said, well, maybe he needed that money. You're not that old and working unless you need money. Come on, somebody. Uh, Is he the only way ever try to get away with something? Yeah. Is he the only one that made a mistake and said, well, maybe I don't see any cameras. I might be able to keep this job and get away with it. But if I report this accident that is major, I'm definitely going to lose this job. And God is saying, we don't have to take the low road. Like President uh, 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 Michelle Obama, First Lady said, oh, no, always take the high road. Always go high. I know we want to compromise. I know we want to settle. I know sometimes we want to give in and cave in. But God said, no, spread your shoulders and stay on my word. Spread your shoulders and stay with my word. It will produce 30, 60, 100 fold in due season. Don't go what's going on in politics. Don't go what you see on TV. Don't go by even what your coworkers and classmates are saying. Go by the word of God that is over your life. God says, I will allow nothing to be barren. No more, no more, no more. You will be productive this year. I said you will produce this year. You will gain on this year. You will accomplish this year. Not 2020. I'm for this year. I'm for right now. I said, God, you said you sent your word and you will heal them. And God's corrected me. He said, no, tell them they're being healed right now. Tell them they're prosperous right now. Tell them they're delivered right now. They shall have what they believe. He corrected me as I was preaching the message. I said, when you sent your angel ahead, that means healing is down the road. That means prosperity down the way. That means deliverance is way down the street. He said, no. Right now, if they believe, it's done. My God. My God. My God. He said, in the moment we believe it, that's when it happened. Amen. Remember Daniel? The angel Gabriel and Michael? Daniel when you prayed it, God sent an angel. Yes. But the prince of Persia, demonic forces in the atmosphere that you cannot see, you don't know what's going on in the heavens because you're a natural being, but I was sent to you, but I got delayed and distracted. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. But now, Daniel, I'm here. I said it will happen. Yeah. Now, Daniel, I'm here. And God is saying to you and I today, we got to get more of God in our life. We got to get more word in our life. We got to get more preaching in our ear gate. We got to get my Bible in our eye gate. We got to hear more doctrine in the name of Jesus. Because the word will not come back void, but it will accomplish that which you sent it to do. Don't let that sickness overwhelm you. Don't let glory be to God your circumstance speak louder than the word of God ever. Don't let what's going on in your family distract you and delay you so much much that you miss God. The angel have already gone ahead of you. God has already prepared a place for you in the name of Jesus. God has already made a way where there is no way in the mighty name of Jesus. That's why you're going to go farther than mommy and daddy. Am I preaching to anybody? That's why you're going to be the generation to finally get your name on the map. That's why in the name of 
Jesus. God brought you like Esther for a time such as this. Is there a queen in anybody on today? Is there a king in you, man of God, in the name of Jesus? I know they try to label our children. I know they're diagnosing our children because they try to cut off their blessing. But the curse is over, even with autism, even bipolar, even ADD. You're going to be victorious. You're going to be successful. You're going to be somebody. You're going to matter. But you got to believe the word that it will happen. Amen. And when a kid is labeled and diagnosed and they believe that truth instead of the truth of God, life becomes hard. It doesn't mean that we don't need the medical profession. It doesn't mean that we don't need medicine and therapies and treatments. But it do mean don't let that override the word of God. Amen, somebody. Is he still a miracle working God or not? I said, is he a miracle working God in 2019 or not? I know we got medicine. I know we got Google. I know we got Amazon. I know we got all the answers. But is he still a miracle working God? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And sometimes, church, if we don't believe to sometimes a better degree, and that's all God is saying sometimes to some of us, I just need to go a little higher. Mm. You don't have to have Billy Graham faith, but you need an elevation of faith. That's right. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's right. Because if you really want to go to the next devil, there's a bigger, the next level, there's a bigger devil. Yes, yes, yes. I said that's how it works. So when you get the PhD, when you get the masters, when you get the doctors, it's not going to be a happy ever, happily ever after. There may be warfare in the school building. Mm -hmm. oh my God. There may be warfare on Wall Street. Yeah. When you become a nurse, there may be warfare even in the hospital. Yeah. But you got the word. You got the word. Yeah. See, the devil going to keep coming, church. That's why if you keep reading he says, there are going to be some enemies. First, he said, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemy. Then he said, I'm going to cut off your enemies. Yeah. Yes. There's going to be enemies on the front end. And then when you get to the promised land, there's going to be some more giants that are called enemies. Yeah. Tell it. Yeah. Tell it. Yes, it does. Every time. So when you get to the penthouse, they're going to try to make you feel like a grasshopper. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you get to prominence, they're going to try to remind you where you came from. That's right. Yeah. When you get to a place of prestige, they're going to try to remind you, you really don't belong here. Right. That's right. And they're going to see themselves as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And the devil will always try to get you to feel inferior. Come on. Yeah. Come on. The size of your church, the size of your bank account, where you live, what you drive, where right. you work. The right. devil will always play this recording in your head that you're not as important as those folks. You're not as big as they are. Yep. That's right. You're not as followed as him and her. Come on now. Yep. And God said, no, no, no. That's not what I'm judging it by. Woo. I'm no respect of persons. Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord's. Am I right? Yes. All they that dwell therein. That's right. I don't have to try to be nobody but Anthony. Yes, right. That's it. That's right. You see, you better love you. You better celebrate you. You better enjoy you. You better be you. You better do you. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because this world, church, I, I, I just see what's on the horizon. And God is saying, no, no, no. I've already prepared a place for you. Right. Amen. I, oh, my God. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. Numbers chapter 23. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, I hope this is helping you because it's helping me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes yeah. I get somewhere and the devil try to knock me back and I'm like, oh no, devil. I work too hard for this. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Jesus. And many of you are making progress, and the enemy's trying to come and snatch that word from you. Right. But don't let them do it. Right. Oh, glory be to God. You're finally on a job that you're getting along with folk, and you're making a little money. You're finally in a place where you got peace of mind. Hallelujah. You're finally in a place in your life where you know who you are, and nobody's trying to lie to you no more. Nobody's trying to control you anymore. You finally got to that place in God where you have resolve, you have stability, you have been in the name of Jesus, rooted and grounded in your belief in God before he was, he was in your mother's womb. He knew you, he called you, and now you're at a place, hallelujah, where they better not even try you. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's, That's right. Yep. This is why we rub people the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> this is why you get on their this is why you get on their last nerve. Your little holy roll of self. Yep. You, you, you keep coming with that God stuff. Yep. You keep coming with what God going to do in your life. Yep. You keep coming to me, talking about I need to believe and I need to give my life over to God. And God is saying, you brought people the wrong way. Because he called you, see, oh my God. Yes, he called you to be light. Yes. He called you to be salt. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, the household I grew up in, we didn't go to church, but my mother had one of these, a Bible. And until we got our act together, this covered us. Amen. I, I see. See, all, all, all we need is somebody in the family. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? We are the new Israel. We are the new Jerusalem. We are the, come on somebody, in the name of Jesus. And that's the God that we serve. The Jewish people are still in Israel because God promised way back in the Old Testament, my people will be in their land once again. Yes, they were ripped out of their land, but through the word of God, Israel was restored. The Jewish people were restored through the life of Esther and her belief, saving the Jewish people from an Esther side, from genocide, in the name of Jesus. We see that God promises a yes and amen. If God do it for the Jew, he can do it for the new Gentile that we are today. He can do it for the new children of Abraham, which are today. Those that believe by faith in the word of God. And that's what God is saying. It will happen. If they stay in faith, this church will blow up from the flow up. If you stay in faith, Pastor Rebecca, your books are going to be bestsellers in the name of Jesus. I know they're not flying off the shelf, but all the prophet, Pastor, if you stay true to what you know, your books are great. I did all this nonsense out here, and God gonna put you on the New York Sellers best list in the name of Jesus. There are many of you, your cookies are not selling now, but glory be to God, like famous Amos, is gonna be famous Hakita. Oh, in the name of Jesus, if you believe the word of God, give God praise. God will blow your business up. God will make it successful. God will do it. God will give you the money. God will give you the business. God will give you the clients. God will give you the service. God will give you the contracts. Yes. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yes, Lord. Can't get your marketing strategy. Yes, do your research. Yes, do a survey. Yes, do your due diligence. But get back in faith, trust in God. Yes. Amen. Yes, That's right. Because there are many businesses that have been great businesses that have gone out of business. That's right. Yes. That's right. But he says, I'll sustain you. My God, my God, my God. Sometimes I look at this church 12 years later. I said, there ain't none but the Lord. This ain't nothing but the Lord. When they walked away, others walked in. Oh, glory be to God. When they didn't want it anymore, others wanted it. Glory be to God. When they came against, God came forth. Glory be to God. I'm telling you what I know. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Are we in numbers? 23? Yes, amen. Can we look at verse number 19? God, say God. God. God is not a man. Amen. That he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? 
and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken it, and shall not he make it good? Behold, I have received a commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Who is that for on today? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody tried to put a spell on you, but it came back on them. In the name of Jesus. Right. Somebody might have made a trap for you, but they fell in their own trap. Oh, glory be to God. David said, put a shield around me. David said, fight against those that fight against me. Contend against those that contend against me. And God heard his prayers. And God dealt with every enemy of David. And God is saying, Yes, the curse is reversed, but the blessing is solid. The blessing is already settled. Whom God has blessed, no man can curse. I'm going to give God praise right there for myself. I know everybody don't want me to succeed. I know everybody don't want you to get the victory. I know everybody don't want you to conquer. I know everybody don't want you to overcome and overflow. But that is too bad. You can hate, you can be jealous, you can covet and be envy. But whom God has blessed, no man can curse. And I cannot reverse it. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. So many people have lied to us. So many people have manipulated us. So many people have deceived us. And that's why, you know, I got to preach like this because we've been so scarred and so wounded. And, and then we're so skeptical and we, we, we so sometimes a suspect. Because and, <laughs> you, you can get to the place, you know, where you can be paranoid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yes. That's not peace. No, it ain't. Come on, somebody. We, we don't want to be so insecure or so scared or so afraid that anybody's out to get us. No, there are some folk for you. Amen. Amen. There's some people that really do love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some people on this earth that really do want the best for you. Yes. Doesn't matter how many bad apples we've come across, there's some good apples. Yes. There's some good people still in the world, church. And sometimes when the world gets colder and colder, it's so distant from God, and you see churches sometimes not as full as they should be, you got to know that you know that you know the word of God. You're in good company. Go and read Hebrews 11. Many of them walk isolated. The, the word said the world was not worthy of them, and the world is not worthy of some of you. Keep your good heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issue of life. They're trying to make you bitter. They're trying to make you fight to lose that good job. They're trying to get you divorced and yelling and looking at your wife and your husband. They're trying to stab you in the back while you're not looking. But you say no weapon formed against me will prosper. And the curse is broken. Whom God has blessed, no man can curse. Y'all can come at me, but y'all going to flee seven different ways. Because the Bible says I am above and not beneath. The Bible says you're the head and not the tail. The Bible says you shall be the first and not the last. Believe God and give God praise that you are above everything that this world can throw at you. You're above every hater, every jealous person, every envious person, every person that don't want you to do well. You're way flying above it. Amen. That's why you're untouchable. You're seated in heavenly places. Church, God wants to bless us. And bless us indeed. And he wants to expand our territory. And sometimes if we're not careful, we need to go back to the Old Testament and see the character of God. He told Isaiah, I will expand their territory. They got to stretch out their tents. They got to know that their children will be blessed. They got to know that their money will be stretched. They got to know that their effort will be rewarded. They got to know that their seed will produce a harvest. They got to know that their faith will produce fruit. They got to know that they know that they know in the name of Jesus, whom God has blessed, no man can reverse it. No man, no man. And we have this onslaught of generations coming at Christians. We have so many Christians when you don't have this root. One more scripture, we're going to go home. Amen. Matthew, chapter number six. 
Matthew chapter 6. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Matthew chapter number 6. Thank you, God. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh, Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, verse number 24. We'll stop here. Matthew 7, verse number 24. We got to know that the foundation is Jesus. Amen? Amen. And when we begin to build on that foundation, sometimes stuff will come against what we're trying to build. Amen. So true. Oh, my God. And some things or someone, whether it's natural or supernatural, may come try to tear it down. Amen. 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 Because if you're the first in your family to stay married, they know there's a chance your children's children will stay married. Amen. Amen. If you're first in your family to get out of debt, they know that that cursing, that 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 that, that debt curse has been broken for generations to come. My God. And the devil's job is to keep you in bondage from generation after generation. But God says, "I will bless to the third and fourth generation of those that love me." So the devil has his destiny in mind for you, but God also has a destiny in mind for you. Amen? Amen. So when I'm talking about it will happen, it's going to happen if we do what's happening here in Matthew, I'm sorry, yeah, Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 24. This is why coming to church is so important. This is why prayer is so important. This is why reading the word of God is so important. We got so many things getting our attention, getting our ear, getting our visuals. But watch what he says, and this is the Beatitudes. In other words, when Jesus started his earthly ministry, this is his first sermon. And he's laying out the groundwork of a new world order, a new way of doing things, a new way of thinking, a new way of conducting ourselves, a new way of understanding. And listen what he says in Matthew chapter number seven, verse number 24. Therefore, Whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken unto him a wise man or woman who built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods did come, and the winds did blow, and it really beat against that house, and it fell not. Because it was built on a rock. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine and do them not shall be like a fool, foolish man, which built his house on the sand. And the rains did come, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it also beat against their house. But it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Church, we can believe the Bible to a degree, but we can believe like these scribes. I believe it, but I kind of don't believe it. But the Bible says the reason Jesus spoke with authority because he was the son of God and he was God in flesh. And he knew that the words that he was saying was true. That if you build your word, if you build your house, if you build your church, if you build your life on the things of God and the word of God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'll always be with you. When the cancer comes, I'm going to be there. When you go through the divorce, I'm going to be there. If you're in bankruptcy court, I'm going to be there. When the church leave and don't want to come anymore, I'm going to be there. When people walk away, I'm going to be there. If you build your word and your life on my word, you will bear 
much fruit in the name of Jesus. But so many in this world, they don't want nothing to do with Jesus. They don't want nothing to do with church. They don't want nothing to do with the scripture. They say that's ancient. That's two, five thousand years ago. That don't matter today. And God is saying, no, the devil is coming and the devil is beating against their house. And another young man, another young woman, another business, another church is going down because the rain is going to come. The storm is going to come. The flood is going to come. But if you build your house on the word of God, it will happen as he said. Is there anybody in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, will give God praise, hallelujah. Pastor, turn down just a little bit. In the name of Jesus, is there anybody that would give God praise today, standing to your feet, hallelujah, and give God praise in the name of Jesus like the three little pigs, hallelujah. You can blow, you can hop and you pop and blow against my house, but it will not fall, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't even build it out of straw. I didn't build it out of wood. I ain't even built it out of brick. But I built it on the rock of Almighty God. And the winds will come. The devil will come against my marriage. The devil will come against this church. The enemy will come against my body. But it will not prevail. Oh, I feel this thing so mightily. In the name of Jesus. And you got to believe and know in your heart of hearts that it will happen. Like God said it will happen. Church, look to your future. Not just in 2019, but look way down the road. Because God said, I will fulfill your years. No premature death up in here, up in here. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. There's nothing going to go wrong with your life. In the name of Jesus. I can and declare over every life you will live long, you will live happily, you will be joyful you will be strong, you won't be played no more, you won't be used no more, you won't be abused no more you won't be manipulated no more you won't be taken advantage of anymore but glory be to God I got somebody watching over me when I can't watch over myself, oh in the name of Jesus, when I make a mistake when I mess up, when I make a bad decision, there's something and someone that got me and got you. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to miss it. You're going to error church. But get back in faith. Respond in faith. Pastor said, I wasn't reading my word. I knew something was wrong. I wasn't as strong. I wasn't as excited. I wasn't as enthusiastic. I got back in word and bam! She got back in faith. She got back into what she knew was right. The word that is built on the rock. He still wants to produce 30, 60, 100 fold. And it breaks his heart that his children are not producing. It breaks his heart that the church is struggling. Wow. Wow. It breaks the heart of God when we take our tithe or we take our offering and we take our blessing and go to Paramus Garden Star Mall. Mm. Yes, shop. Yes, have nice stuff. Yes, do right by yourself. But honor God first, church. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. He said, love me, not the things in this world. Yes. We got to love God more. We got to want God more than this world. We got to want God. And see, I was going about my business in, in those clubs and that party scene used to pull me and drag me and, and there were things that I grew up in. And I, you know, I didn't pray that stuff away. I think God, God remove it. <laughs> God get the disco up out of me. No, he, he, he's like, no, you're you going to preach. You gonna have desire, you ain't got no desire from clubs anymore. You can't even dance, I can't even dance anymore, church. I got two left feet now. But God would, he know you. Say God, no, say God know me. God knows me. Better than I know myself. Yes, yes. Ain't that the truth? Amen. Amen. We, we think we know, we make a solid I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that no more. We over there doing that. Yep. Amen. I you, so true. I, I, you just said, <laughs> I 
I ain't going there no more, and you over there again. Mm-hmm. But God knows you better than you know you. Right. That's right. That's why we got to trust him, church. Yes. And when you begin to honor and trust him, those little desires that you think are stronger, they get so weak. Mm-hmm. That's right. That little soul tie and these things from the world that we, we want to uh, get gravity to and we want to give a... Uh, 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 no. That word overrides all this man's philosophy. That's right. Amen? That's right. Amen. We need it all, but this overrides all of that. Amen, somebody? Amen. And that's why we got to pray, we got to pray, we got to pray. We got a prayer line on Tuesday night. We got Word Wednesday, and we got Sunday afternoon. And God is saying, get all you can get, church, in this hour, because the enemy is turning up the heat. Mm-hmm. Show enough fears. The voices are still happening. This cancer epidemic is in our day. Autism is in our day. Mm. The violence that we see in liquor politics, this is not going anywhere anytime soon. But if the children of God start applying this Bible, start performing miracles, start doing signs, wonders, and miracles again, start saying no to the stuff of this world, then God can come down and begin to get the glory again. But as long as we keep slipping into what the world is doing, slipping into what the world wants, slipping into what the world desires, we're going to miss God. The miracles that got your name on it, the prosperity that has your name on it, the marriage and the home that God has in mind for you, I'm going to take you to a place that I prepared for you. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. I'm going to pray because when God said I'm going to take sickness away, I'll, I'll deal with your enemies. If you've been barren, you're no longer barren. Sometimes, you know, we, we've been trying things and tried to get the business off the ground, didn't get off the ground. Yes. Could this be your year? Yes. Amen. Tried marriage before, don't want to be married again. Mm. But it looked like God telling me I'm going to be married again. <laughs> And you're not believing God, but that is the voice of God in your head. Mm-hmm. I just want to, I just want to pray because I'm just sensing that we're gonna have so much prosperity this year, and the devil mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm just looking at so much success in this room. I'm looking at so much advancement and progress in this room. I ain't trying to hype you up. I'm serious. Yes, Lord. I just see y'all advancing. I see y'all growing. I see y'all, Amen, improving, getting better in so many areas. But you got to cover it in prayer. Amen. Because you're going to have an opposition. Let's, let's pray. Anybody need prayer, let's just pray. We're not going to prolong it. I'm not going to pull up.